Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I ended up having some extra time. Um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, do my lecture in a um, on video for the persuasive speech. Um, hopefully, I'm trying to close out a box here. It won't close. Anyway, come on. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to get started out with persuasive speaking. Persuasive speaking is the type of speaking where you are trying to um, get people to change their mind about something or to, um, if they've never even heard about it, to um, try to get them to try something, okay? So um, this really brings in ethics because with with this type of speech, you have to have an ethical um, reason and an ethical approach so that you don't cause harm, okay? So honesty is very important. Respect for the integrity of ideas and information, um, using communication responsibly, and then listeners also share the responsibility of being informed, curious, listeners and critical listeners and to ask questions, okay? Don't just take things for what they are. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is look at the process of persuasion. So this is the process you want to go through as you are giving your speech. And I apologize for all the noise happening right now at my house. Um, so the first thing you want to do is call the awareness of your audience to um, whatever topic is, is you talking about. Never assume that people know something. Never assume that, okay? You always present things, all of the information as if people are hearing about it for the first time, okay? Um, the next thing is you're wanting to people to come to a place of understanding. You're wanting them to hear what you say. You've now made them aware and now you want them to come to a place of understanding about how something um, became to be, or um, you want to give them contrasting opinions about things so they understand that there's two sides to, to this argument or to a problem that you're talking about. And you definitely want to use the, the views of exports. So not just your opinion, not that uh, at this point, none of you are experts on your particular topic, okay? So you need, and even if you were an expert, you would need to be able to um, share the opposing side, which would then give you actually more, um, more respect because you know both sides, okay? So understanding awareness is first and understanding is next when you're looking at the process of persuasion. The next is agreement. So you want people to go from awareness to understanding to agreement. You wanting them to get to this point where they can at least accept this opinion, uh, this position. And it can, as it says here, it can range from just small concessions like, you know what, I hear what you're saying and I can see where you're coming from, right? They didn't necessarily change their mind and agree with you completely, but they at least understand your position. Then to total exception, acceptance, which is they really, they grab it and they are in complete agreement with you. The next stage of this process is, of this process is enactment. So getting people to do things, once they've made this agreement with you, getting them to, to not just agree, but then actually to take action about it. So this is when it becomes really, really vital because when, when people begin to take action, this is when you find out if the, the, the M, this is where you find out if the intention of the speaker was to cause harm or to bring goodwill. Because it's in the way that people behave and the actions that they take that you really find out whether or not something was, was negative or positive, okay? And so this is when we really wanna be careful because it's in the space of acting 
that you not only affect yourself, but can affect others as well. And then the last stage of this process is integration. And that is when the person completely integrates this new idea or this new approach into their life. It becomes a part of their core values, okay? So that is the process of persuasion. And that's what you're working through and that's what you're working towards in your speeches. So something you wanna be aware of and to be, and you don't want your speeches to reflect this when you are talking, and that is cognitive dissonance. And that is when what you're saying and what you're doing are not in alignment one, with one another. So it's like saying, um, just to use an example, saying that all lives matter and then being silent and being okay when a person of color is killed and no justice is, is given. Like there's, there's no justice, there's no punishment to the person who killed them, right? So you're saying on one side, you believe in the sanctity of life for everybody, but then you don't actually have anything to say or any idea of, of how, to, um, how to also include the lives of people of color, right? So that's cognitive dissonance. And that's just to be, make it very, very clear and relevant to where we are right now, okay? Um, if you can point out inconsistencies around this in your opposing argument, this actually helps your argument. If you can see where there's cognitive dis dissonance in someone else's argument, okay? So when you guys do your um, topic proposals, you need to give me one type of, of persuasive speech that you're going to give, okay? So we're gonna go over the three types of persuasive speeches. The first type of persuasive speech just focuses on facts. That's all it does is factual information, okay? Um, you look at everything from a factual point of view, okay? So you're looking at the nature, scope, causes, implications. Um, you're looking at authoritative experts. You're not using a whole bunch of, of opinions and, and study and things that, are, that aren't related to research, okay, that other people have done. Um, so some other things you wanna take into consideration is you wanna address questions of the past, present and future facts, okay? So this is when you focus on facts alone in a persuasive speech. The other type of persuasive speech is those that emphasize attitudes and values. And then here you're asking your listen, listeners to evaluate judgments about a situation or an issue. And um, it usually builds on a speech that is addressing facts. So you want to tie values through stories, examples, and vivid language, okay? So it's like facts can be kind of dry, but actually maybe not, because you know sometimes facts can be very compelling, but it's taking those facts and then adding to them some, if facts were like the skeleton, adding this core values through stories, examples, and vivid language is like the meat that you can put on the muscles and the meat that you can put onto that skeleton, okay? So that's the second type of persuasive speech. The third type of persuasive speech are the types that advocate action and policy. So these are ones that you're trying to get your audience to embrace or enact a given policy or plan of action for resolving a problem. So you're saying like, um, like there's an intersection in your city where um, there's been lots of accidents and there is not a, a traffic light there. So you wanna persuade, like you're going to city council or something, you wanna persuade them to install um, a traffic light at this particular section of, of, the, of the city. And so then you pull on facts, you pull on stories and all these things to try and get them to take action and put a traffic light up at this particular intersection that's dangerous, okay? 
So you wanna convince people that there is a problem. You wanna provide them with concrete advice or steps. You wanna convince them that your particular proposals are workable and will make a difference. You want to remind your listeners of the consequences of not acting, okay? You want to assure your listeners that your proposals are consistent with their shared values. And then you want to emphasize the importance of acting together as a community, okay? So you have three types of persuasive speeches, okay? And you need to choose one of them to focus on facts, to emphasize attitudes and values or speeches that advocate action and policy, okay? So now we go into the design for speeches. Now you guys have learned in ceremonial speech and in informative speech that there are also different ways that you can design your speech to be able to have the maximum impact on your audience. So there's eight designs for persuasive speeches. With this, you can choose whatever combination will best help you to um, be persuasive. So you don't have to choose one, you can choose multiple ones of these. And this is the way you will design your speech to um, be able to persuade your audience. So the first is a problem solution design. Pretty well, I mean, pretty straightforward. You present a problem and then you say, here's a solution, okay? And that's your problem solution design. The next one is a motivated sequence design. And this one's really fun. So here you offer a step-by-step -step approach that moves listeners from attention to action. So there's a whole step you go through. I love giving this example. When you go to the movies, right? And you're sitting in the audience and before the movie starts, this commercial comes on and it's a, it's a Coke commercial or Pepsi commercial. And in it, all they have is an empty glass at first. And then you see them dump ice into that glass. It arouses your attention. Okay, I don't have anything to drink right now. And oh, they, they put this glass and oh, I see ice going into the glass, right? And then they start pouring the Pepsi or the Coke into the glass. Of, and you're like, wow, you're seeing all that buzzle, the bubbles and it's fizzing. And um, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna be here for two hours. I might need to have something to drink. And then you see a straw go into the glass and someone starts drinking the soda. And then they go, ah, right? They satisfied this need of you need to have this glass of, of soda so that you, you know, you're thirsty. So you need to have this if you're going to watch this two hour movie. And so then that also you, you get to visualize the results that that refreshing, you know, it quenched your thirst result. And then there's a call for action. Go out, you know, basically go out to the concession stand if you don't have a drink and go get one. That is motivated sequence. Okay, it's used a lot in advertising for products to get you to go from not having that product to getting that product, right? This can also be used for, as I told you guys, I want you to do speeches around so things of social impact or social importance. You can use the same kind of motivated sequence in that way. So the next design, the third design is refutative design. And the refutative design is very much so based on you, pro, you provide your particular point of view and, and you provide the point of view of your opposing side. And then you try to refute the opposing side. You try to say, well, this was not true or this is not right. And I can, I can show you where they are wrong and, and this approach is better. So this is your refutative design. You're refuting what someone else has said or what another opposing viewpoint is. Then there's the causation design, which is there's a cause. So something happened and there's an effect. So um, looking at something that's happening right now and what is the cause of it? 
why is this particular thing happening right now? And so then you're looking at all the things that led up to this particular issue at this very moment, okay? And um, the next type of design is chronological design, which would probably work really well with the causation design because chronological design is you are looking at time, you're looking at history, and you're, you're showing how something over time has shifted or changed or um, how decisions made at one point had an impact at another point and you're showing the history of it, okay? So that's the chronological design. Oh, I said it again, sorry. The next kind of design is the, the categorical design. And that's when you put things into categories and you're arguing about the point. So let's say you have your, 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 your point is one thing and then you're, you're offering the opposing side. And um, each one, you give them the same categories. So let's say we're talking about um, pizza with pineapple. Now, I'm just giving you an example. This is not what I want you to do for your speech. I just can't think that deep right now. <laughs> so, so you're talking about pizza. You have pineapple and then pepperoni, right? Categorical design would be taste, taste. Um, uh, uh, nutrition, nutrition. Um, so for each one, you have the same category. And what you're doing is you're talking about each one based on those categories, but you're wanting them to, maybe you're in, in, maybe you're trying to get people to eat pepperoni pizza. So you obviously want to present the pepperoni pizza categories in a way that's really, you know, that people will really love to eat a pepperoni pizza and they're not gonna choose the, the pineapple pizza, right? So that's categorical design. The next design is comparative design or contrast where you compare and contrast. There you go. One thing and the other thing, you compare them to each other. What are the positives of both? What are the negatives of both? And then sequential, very similar to um, what we did before in informative speeches. Sequential design is different from chronological design in that sequential is step by step. It's not necessarily based on time. It's just based on this happened and because this happened, this happened. And because this happened, this happened. So sequential design, okay? So those are the eight the different designs for your speech. So if you wanna have an effective argument, you need to have an introduction that frames your issue in a way that predisposes your listeners to accept your message. So you need to have your, your opening argument needs to be compelling. It needs to draw people in. It needs to um, touch on, on their, their desire to understand more, okay? So your opening argument, your introduction is really important. And then you wanna make a proposition that clearly articulates your persuasive theory, thesis. So you need to propose something that makes sense to your audience, okay? And it supports your thesis statement, okay? Then you want to have arguments that uh, engage the opposing views and reservations of the opposing side or reservations your audience might have and they should provide reasoning and support for your position, okay? So have arguments that support your position. And then you need to have a conclusion that summarizes your argument, that emphasizes the important and, and has a call to action if that is appropriate for the type of speech that you chose, okay? So your introduction and conclusion need to be really strong with a persuasive speech, okay? And then your body, in between needs to do a really good job of moving through those stages of persuasion, okay? So that's how you set up an effective argument. Of course, using facts, using searchable, researchable information, um, and not using em emotion or language that, that um, creates 
a sense of fear or division, okay? So you want to be able, the facts alone should be able to get your audience on the same page as you, okay? And then the last thing is your ethical voice. You need to be approaching this from an ethical position and using ethical persuasion. So you avoid name calling, okay? No name calling in your speeches, right? You want to be open about your personal interest in this topic. Why is this personally important to you? So don't adapt the point of compromising. Don't adapt to the point of compromising your convictions. Okay. So you don't want to compromise what you believe, but you also want to make certain that you are clear about what the opposing side may be saying. You want to use responsible knowledge and responsible knowledge uses uh, credible, um, fact-based, expert-based information. Do not pass off opinions or inferences as facts. Okay, so saying that, uh, I don't know, um, Trying to think of something um, to give an example of this. Uh, let's see. An opinion that that can be. Okay, the um, the right to vote uh, is is not important, or the right of vote to vote is important. Is that a fact or is that an opinion, right? It would be an opinion, but the fact is that voting is, is universal. Everyone has a right to vote. That's a fact. Now, whether or not someone thinks it's important or not is an opinion about the right to vote, okay? So being able to tell the difference between what is a fact and what's an opinion. Please don't use inflammatory language to hide the lack of evidence. If you cannot find good information, good evidence for your argument, then you might need to change your argument or in your speech, if you end up switching over to the other side, that's perfectly fine, okay? If you end up realizing that the opposing side actually had better information and you're, you are persuaded in your process of trying to persuade others, you become persuaded, that's fine. But don't use inflammatory language to hide lack of evidence. Be sure your proposal is in the best interest of your audience and then remember that words can hurt, okay? So with this persuasive speech, you want to be careful about um, how you, um, how you present yourself, how you, how you speak about something, um, and you want to have research, okay? And as I said, I want your persuasive speeches to be on topics of social importance. So things that impact people's lives, okay? Um, and, it, and I want them to not um, uh, focus only on your opinion. I don't want to only hear your opinion. I need to hear both sides of an argument and it needs to be well researched. Okay. So um, that is all on persuasive speaking. Please watch this video and come prepared on to class on Monday for um, me to do some more work around you getting ready to do your persuasive speech. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend because it is the weekend now <laughs> and take care.